If you would like to learn how to build a camper van like this yourself, then please check out my other YouTube videos. So if you guys have found these videos helpful, you can help me out in a big way by picking up a copy of my first ever album that my brother and I recorded in Nashville late last year. Any proceeds will go to future recording projects as well as taking the van on tour and hopefully promoting it. I'll leave a link in the description and talk a little bit more about it at the end of this video. Next up we're going to box in the wheel arches, okay? And this one's already been made up, um, it just needs painting. So, I'll just quickly show you what it looked like. So that's what the inside looks like. So we've got like a timber frame here using 1x1s, 25mm by 25mm. And uh, just covered in a plywood um, that I had left over from the doors actually. This is 5mm plywood. So we'll show you how to do this. First things first then, we need to take a measurement for the length of the box for the wheel arch, okay? And then across here. So I'm actually going to make this one on the left-hand side a little bit longer. Uh, annoyingly, my jerry cans are going to end up sitting over here on this left-hand side. Um, but the wheel arch gets in the way, so one of the jerry cans is going to have to sit on top of the box, like so, okay? But because it's going to be further along, I don't want any chance of it tipping over, so I'm going to extend the one on the left-hand side compared to the right. You obviously want to just, when you're measuring out yours, you basically don't want to take out any more length than you have to because you know, space is really important. So you're just going to measure up right from one edge of the wheel arch to the other edge of the wheel arch, okay? And cut a piece of 25 by 25 mil pine to that length. Okay, so just quickly then before we cut up our wood, uh, just a quick tip when you're buying it from any hardware store, just make sure that it's not a bowed piece of wood. So when I say bowed, it's got a bend in it somewhere or it's twisted. Um, so what you can do to check um, if it's a nice, decent, straight piece of wood is you can lay it flat on the floor and the piece of timber should lay flat on the floor, okay? So try it on a couple of sides just to make sure. You can also look down the piece of timber as well. And if it has got a bend in it, it makes it very difficult to make something like a box where you need a nice, straight piece of timber and the wood becomes pretty much unusable. So just put it to one side and get a piece that is straight and also check for any cracks in the wood as well. Okay, so the measurement I need to make for mine is 65 centimetres. So I'm just going to mark that off on here. And then I'm going to cut it with the mitre saw. Alright, so I'm going to take the piece of timber we just cut, just hold it up against the wheel arch here and just check that it is the right length. Okay, then we're going to take a measurement of these two sides here. And then we can decide how long the pieces of timber need to be for the width. So mine came out to 12.1, so I'm going to cut two pieces for the width at 12.1 each. Got any tear out like this? can just go and sand it using a little piece of sandpaper. So next up then we need to join the two width pieces to our length of wood. Okay, and to do that we're going to use a type of joinery called pocket hole joinery. So we're going to use this which is called our Craig jig. Okay, Craig is the manufacturer and uh, a jig is a type of tool you can use to um, do various things with. In this particular instance we're going to make pocket holes. Okay, um, so this is a little bit overkill for just some real large boxes. You could just get something like a 12 millimeter piece of plywood, okay, and literally butt it up against each other. And a butt joint is literally where you just butt it up like that. And then you could just glue it together, and you could perhaps put a screw or a nail through the other end. But because we're going to be using pocket hole joinery for our kitchen unit and also for the bed, it's a good time to show you how this works, okay? So let me bring the camera just a little closer. So, like I said, this is our pocket hole. Um, jig here. So what you want to do first up is you need to set, set this, okay? What, what is basically going to happen is you're going to put your piece of wood in like this, you'll clamp it into place, 
and then you're going to put this drill bit into this hole and it's going to create a pocket hole and uh, then you can stick a screw through that pocket hole okay but you need to set this jig up correctly first so in this instance, this instance sorry we're going to be using a 25 millimeter piece of wood so that's one inch um, so the first thing you need to do is you need to set the height of this piece here and it says here in millimeters we need to go so you need to set it to the thickness of your wood so ours is 25 mil so it says 25 mil on here and then you just tighten this screw down here okay uh, the next thing you need to do is you'll get one of these drill bits in your Craig jig Craig, Craig jig <laughs> rather and uh, what you can do is you can place it in here and as you can see there's different measurements listed here and you need to set yours to the correct height because of course if you set it to go in too deep your hole in the piece of wood is going to become too deep your screw is going to go in too far it's going to come out the other side okay so again we're going to set it to the thickness of our piece of wood again ours is 25 millimeter mine's already set to 25 millimeter but if you needed to change the height what you do is you get an allen key okay and you place it in here if you turn it anti-clockwise you can loosen it off and then you place the base part in here and then you can move the drill bit accordingly to get it to the right size so ours is at 25 mil just there so we're just going to tighten it back down by turning it clockwise great as you can see that's 25 mil now okay uh, and then the final bit you've got to do is a bit of faffing but once you've got it all set up it's then pretty easy to use and you can and use it quite quickly so we now want to make sure that our clamp is going to clamp on to the piece of wood nice and tight okay so mine's already set up already so I'm just going to test it as you can see that piece of timber is going nowhere but you do need to change your pocket hole jig you need to take a little spanner like this there'll be a nut on the end here that you can loosen off and what you need to do just to show you okay is you place your piece of timber in here you close the clamp and you basically want to get this I mean it's already pretty much hand tight so you basically want to move that until it's hand tight against the workpiece okay which it is now okay take it back off take your timber out then you need to turn this a bit a couple of times to make it a little go a little bit further in to make it really nice tight fit and then close off your nut here and don't forget to tighten it with the spanner so it doesn't come loose again okay then once you've done that place your piece of timber in and just check that it does clamp on nicely great so that's perfect so what we want to do then is there's three holes here okay so if you're uh, using pocket holes on a larger piece of timber that's wider you could do two at a time look uh, if you press it up against here so you want to line it up with as we're just doing one pocket hole line it up with the one white line there and make sure that it's lined up at the top with the line here okay so I'm gonna do that clamp it in place Cool. take our drill bit and put it on the end of our drill I've got quite a fast setting on my drill, I'm on number two at the moment, the fastest it'll go. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're just going to place it into the hole here and we're going to go in and out about three times. We're going to clear the wood out as we go. So I'll just show you how that looks. Alrighty. So we take it out. That's what our pocket hole looks like. And later on what we'll do is we'll put a piece of glue on the end here we'll also add a screw in and uh, then we've got a drill bit like this which has got a square head on it just like the screw itself and we'll just basically screw it into the other piece of timber just quickly then uh, I'm going to show you why using a Craig jig is good so it's not really ideal to take a piece of wood butt it up against another piece of wood and then just shove a screw through because if you chuck it through an end piece of 
wood, it's not going to be as strong a joint, it's not going to hold as well as putting it in through the side. It's just the way the fibres of the wood work, okay, so they're more likely to separate at the end if you were to screw into the end piece, okay. So that's why a Craig jig is great, because our screw is going to go in, if you see here, in at an angle, but through the side of the wood, so it's going to be a, a bit of a better fit. Another thing I like about using a Craig jig as well is the quick times um, from making the workpiece to actually being able to install it. Just because you've got glue and a screw, um, there's no drying times that you need to wait for. So as soon as you put that screw in, you can then go and put it in, in place in your camper and you're not having to wait around. So some people don't like to use this because it's not a traditional uh, woodworking method, but it works extremely well and uh, it's quite a simple thing to start with and get used to doing a bit of woodwork and uh, then you can go from there and try other things after. So I've clamped the length uh, of this wood onto my work table here. So it's great if you've got a nice flat table to work with. It makes joining these two pieces together a whole lot easier. So what I've done here is I've placed the pocket hole on the outside so that the screw will go in like this, okay, rather than going back out towards the end of the piece of timber. These are what our screws look like and you need to be able to know which length of screw you want to use. So when you buy your Craig jig you'll get a little manual like this and it will tell you which screw to use with certain sizes of timber. So for instance here, if you can see this, it says ours is 25mm our thickness of the material. So the screw length I need is, needs to be one and a half inches long, okay? You can buy these on eBay. There's some stores that sell them that are very popular in America. Not so much in the UK, you might have to travel a bit further to get some of these screws, but these are what they look like. Okay. And this one is one and a half inches and it's got a square head like this. As I mentioned previously, you'll get a drill bit like this, which also has a square head that will fit into the end of the screw. So you don't need to drill a pilot hole into these because these screws are designed to cut through the wood themselves. What you need to do is just apply a little piece of glue. So I'm using some of this Gorilla Wood glue. I'm going to apply it on the end here. I can wipe away any excess later. I'm going to butt it up against there. I'm going to put my screw in place. Now you could use a clamp to hold this piece of wood in place too, so it doesn't go anywhere, which I'm going to do. Okay, so I'm just going to clamp that in there. The, the workpiece does have a tendency to move a little bit, once you start pushing that screw through. So, I'm just going to take the drill bit now, place it in the end, and screw it all the way in until you feel some tension and then you can start to relax off a bit on the drill. Cool. So I'll just show you that quickly. That's how it's come out. There's a little bit of excess glue here, okay? But we can just wipe that away and then we can do the other side. So now we've just taken the pieces we joined, we've placed them up against the wheel arch and just checked that it all does fit, which this one does. So I'm going to take the exact same measurements and I'm going to make the exact same thing again that's going to sit on the top. So we've just checked that our second piece fits, which it does. So now we just need to make the blocks which go onto each corner to hold the top piece up. And you need to measure it to size to the very top of the wheel arch here. And I'd say uh, you just need to leave just a small gap for the plywood to then sit above it, so don't take up too much room because space is uh, very valuable. So mine's going to be 18 millimeters, so I'm going to go and cut that now. So there's our four pieces in place, and this is what it will look like. So we need some pocket holes now. Uh, two actually, one that goes into the bottom section, one that goes into the top section. And the one that goes into the top section needs to be on the outer side because once we've screwed these bits into the bottom it's going to be very hard for us to access the inside with this drill bit here. Like if you can imagine you're trying to drill one of these screws in, it's not going to be able to 
going that way. So we're going to have to do it from the outside here. Same on those, okay? Great, so one on the inside here then. Alright, then we're going to turn this round and we're also going to flip it. Great, so now that will allow one screw to go up at the top and one screw to go down in the bottom. I'm going to do this to all four. Okay, so I'm going to take this piece now, making sure we're going to be screwing into this end here. Apply a little bit of wood glue. Place it there. Take a screw. Now, when you're using pocket hole joinery, the screw should go in at this angle. Okay, if it's coming away, there's more chance that it's actually going to split the wood because we didn't have enough room to do two pocket holes on the outside. We've had to do it this way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to screw this screw in just part of the way. Then we're going to revert it back out and then I'm going to drill a little pilot hole. Okay. You can feel that there, just touching the wood. So it's made a little mark there. I'm just going to very quickly draw a pilot hole in at a bit of an angle. Okay. Nothing too deep, just enough to stop it from splitting. So now I'll put that piece back on. You could probably put the glue on a bit later actually, probably at this point. And then just screw it in. Now it's found that pilot hole and it stopped it from splitting the wood. So you wouldn't normally have to do that, it's just because my pieces are so small um, that I've had to make the screw go in that way instead of that way, which, is, which could cause it to split. But if you have longer pieces of wood you won't have to worry about that. They're all on now, I'm just going to place this on top of here and we're going to glue and screw the ends on. So we're just going to go ahead and do that now. I'm going to apply glue to each of the corners. Top and you can put screws in. I'm going to make sure that this is nicely butted up against the end for a nice seamless joint. Okay, so I'm just going to put, apply some pressure on that and then screw it in. Just put a clamp across something like that so it does make sure that it's nice and straight. Great, so just wipe away any excess glue and then uh, we're ready to apply some plywood to it. I'm just going to check that it fits up properly to the wheel arch. Right, so this is going to sit like this against the wheel arch so we want to apply some plywood across here, here, here and across the top. So I need to measure the width here, which is 12.9. Same across there. So just measure yours out and then go to your plywood and cut these three sides to whatever size it is. I'm going to do mine to 12.9. So using my guide fence and the measurements across here, I've set it to 12.9, so I'm just going to run this through the table saw. Next up we're going to cut the length of the plywood, so we're going to do this front panel first and it's 64.9 centimetres, so we're going to take to the miter saw and do that. Great, so I'm measuring out 64.9 on here. I'm just going to sand off these splintered edges. Let me check it fit. Someone's drawn an arse. <laughs> Which it does. 
perfectly. Okay, so what we're going to do, apply a load of glue around here. Let's put this on top. Ready? I'm going to take some screws and I'm going to put about four screws, one on each side. And these screws are 3.5 mil thick and they're 30 millimeters long. Okay. I'm going to clamp it on just to make sure it doesn't wriggle about as I'm screwing it in. Just make sure that it's butted up against the sides properly. And now we just screw these because these are such small screws there's little chance of it splitting the wood so we can just drill these straight in. Okay and these are countersunk screws can you see you can see it's gone all the way in so we'll just go around to all four sides and do that. what it looks like and the screws will hold that into place and it will the glue will dry out just by pouring any excess now we just got to take the measurements for this side and uh, when we do that we now need to take into account the extra five mil that this piece of plywood has added So our three sides are in. It's just a case now of measuring the width and the length on this top piece. I'm just cutting it to size. So the top bit's now cut to size. Before we screw it on though, I'm going to actually screw this whole piece into the floor of the van. Um, before I put this bit on, I've still got access to here, which is the point in which I'm going to screw this whole real large box into the floor. So with our box in place, I'm going to draw a pilot hole. I'm going to place the drill in at a little bit of an angle so that I can get it all the way in. And just drill the pipe hole all the way through to the floor. I've got some fairly long screws. I think these were 50mm long. I'm going to just use those to screw the box into the floor. So the box is screwed in, I just need to secure this top bit into place and then I'm going to fill these edges with wood filler and sand it back later. Right, so I filled all these gaps here then with some wood filler and I left it to dry overnight and uh, I'm just going to sand these back now with a sander just like we did with our cladding and uh, I've got my respirator on so we're ready to go. Right, so sanded that all back, giving it a quick brush just to make sure there's no debris. We're going to mask off all around these edges here on the floor and then I'm going to paint this white. So we're all masked off. Just going to get a flathead screwdriver, open up the tin, and give it a stir using the scrap piece of wood here making sure there's no debris or anything on the end of the wood that will get into the paint. Give it a good stir and apply it across here side to side. Thanks for stopping by everybody, please like and subscribe and check out our other content on all things camper. As I mentioned before, I've just recorded my first album and will need all the help I can get. So I'll leave you with an album preview for now and a link in the description if you'd like to pick up a copy.
the song that you can. You put their cold and harsh demeanor It'll soon come back around So don't let the bastards get you down Living God